The Show Me the Money on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted same-game parlays to live in-game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today, bet $100, and get a $100 free bet at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash winbet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T. Welcome to the Show Me the Money. We are your guide to gambling on the movies. We are your hosts, Nick, the father turner. Hat the hat stango here. And Clayton Speech Kings Gumbert. I, I always forget. Where did you get that nickname? The hat? Yeah. How, get, how did that happen? Uh, well, you gave it to me. Also, mm. I should probably start wearing hats because I'm, you know, 40. The hair's not all there anymore. So I think the nickname is more a suggestion more than anything. Yeah. I should start wearing Actually, our uh, first, baseball caps. Our first recording, you were wearing glasses, and I called you Pat Glasses Stango. And mm. Clayton was wearing a hat, and I called him Clayton Hat, the hat, Gumbert. But your name rhymes with hat, so I just ch- changed it. Oh, and now that works, too. Clayton's wearing glasses and a hat, and I don't know what's going on with you guys. Yeah, it's wild. That's why you got to you gotta go to our Patreon and watch the video cast, because then this all makes sense. There's layers upon layers to this podcast. Guys, welcome to the show. We have a lot of show to bring you today. We've got nominations for the Golden Globes. We've mm-hmm. got the Critics' Choice Awards nominations. Uh, we've also got our deep dive into everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, we've got some other stories. The whale is out, among other things. Guys, let's get into it. Um, first up, uh, I want to tell everyone what lines are available. Okay, great. Okay, so just the the basis of this podcast is that these people need to be betting, okay? So keep your little speech ratings to yourselves for two more minutes. Uh, Bovada still has lines for the major categories. Yeah, we're saying the names. Who gives a shit? And uh, BetUS uh, had, has no more lines for the Academy Awards, assuming they'll come back. But what has replaced it? Pat Stango. Did you what? see? No, what is is it is it uh uh, uh my book Golden bookie? Globes oh uh, for nearly every category is available oh. to bet on bet us oh wow uh, every category of the Golden Globes if you've been following this show since the beginning since our uh, get rich nick days you know that we took a bath last year at the Golden Globes mm-hmm. and i am quite skittish about gambling on them but they're the first ones and you can't, it's hard to, I got to do it. We got to do it. I mean, I can't wait. I'm I'm going to bet US right now and checking out these lines. This is very exciting. All right, guys, so there. let's get into it. Uh, Clayton, hit our uh, music for entertainment betting news. Well, am I supposed to make that noise with my mouth? No, I know we that... had nothing prepared. I just figured something would happen. Well, I could do it in the did. edit, but <laughs> that's good enough. All right, guys. Uh, big, big news. Nothing bigger. Golden Globe nominations are out. Pat, what are your first thoughts? I mean, my first thought is the Globes are back. I mean, the backstory to the whole Globe situation is they were gone for a year. You know, they 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 were banished to Twitter last year. They basically didn't matter. There was no ceremony. All of Hollywood had to ignore it. Even if you won like Rachel Zegler, you had to pretend it didn't exist. But there's going to be a ceremony this year. It's on a Tuesday night in early January. It's going to be on NBC. And my first big prediction about the Globes is they matter. The stars are going to go. The publicists are saying it's okay. The stars are going to accept the awards. And the speeches are going to matter in terms of getting Oscar nom nom noms. The winners are going to matter. And let's be honest. If you didn't get a nomination for your category in the Golden Globes, it's going to be tough to win the Oscar. Yes. If you're making long shot bets and your person didn't get nominated for a Golden Globe or a Spirit Award, Mm -hmm. then you're probably throwing money down the drain. Well, well here, here's something here's something that I could push back on really quickly. And, and you know, I love to push back mm-hmm. is that Tom Cruise Clayton pushed back Gumbert. Yes. Tom, uh, Tom Cruise was not nominated for a Golden Globe this year. 
And mm. that is because he famously returned his Golden Globes when all of the Golden Globe hullabaloo happened. Mm. So he may still get an Oscar nomination. It's just that they're not going to nominate somebody who sent back their trophies in the past. Well, you know what, asshole? Don't bring he got up nominated afraid. for a Golden Globe. Well, for not for actor. I didn't say for actor. Top Gun. I'm just saying this person that could never get nominated was nominated for this movie, Best Picture, as a producer. Okay, but what I'm saying is, as a person <laughs> okay. himself, nobody's looking at that producer list. You know what I mean? Like, yes, if that movie wins, he goes up on stage, which he probably. Yeah, won't I didn't be look there. at the list. I just kind of assumed. Okay. So I thought you were going to talk about Brendan Fraser, who said he would not show up because he was sexually assaulted by one of the members of the Golden Globe voting committee, who we all know is just a group of 11 or so psychopaths. Sexual assaulters. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And if they're mm -hmm. not sexual assaulters, they are sick in the head. But it's about right. it's about 100 people. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, I was being facetious. I was yeah. being hyperbolic. But I don't think people know that. Yeah, but it is yeah. it is a small voting body. It is such a small voting body that their individual tastes and what they decide should not matter at all to anyone yeah. anywhere. But they're looked at as a bellwether for the Oscars. I was hoping that it would never come back. But yes, here we are talking about the Golden Globes again. Yeah. yeah. And and I do I, I do want to note that unlike the critic or the uh, Gotham Awards, Simon Rex is not one of the um uh, the people selecting the winners. Well, so no, now you worry. have. Uh, what's your axe to grind with Simon Rex? Did you do? Yo, a... we covered this last year. Y'all were all hot on Red Rocket. I was not. I was co one hundred percent correct. No one got nominated or won anything. And uh, you know, I don't know. You guys loved a dumb movie. You were wrong. Oh my goodness. He, he won an Indie Spirit Award. He's a, he's a darling. He's a, yeah. a former VJ made good. And that's always a story I like to see in Hollywood. Um, so the, the Globe nominations are in. And I think the big thing that we could take away from the Globe nominations, along with the Critic Choice Award nominations that we saw this week, National Board of Review winners, is we could start to see some strong favorites forming, at least for who's going to get nominated for the Oscars and who's going to be the favorites to win. So, I mean, I, I, let's go around. I'll toss to Clayton first. Do you have any people based on this week, based on the Globe nom nom noms, the Critics' Choice nom nom noms, National Board of Review winners that came in, what are a few people or movies that jump out to you as having been solidified this week, you know, who start to be like, okay, this is a slam doink. These people are definitely getting the nom nom noms. I mean, Austin Butler mm -hmm. jumps out at me immediately because he was nominated for uh, best actor in a drama, not mm -hmm. a musical or comedy. So that shows some real strength there. Yep. And that movie, Elvis, was nominated in drama, which speaks volumes. So I definitely think that is... Uh, a strong showing for him. I mean, obviously, Kate Blanchett, I think she's going to be the person to beat in this race mm -hmm. right now. And, of course, our deep dive movie of the week, Everything Everywhere All at Once, is just yeah. going from strength to strength. I mean, if anybody's going to beat uh, Tar, Kate Blanchett, I mean, it's going to be Michelle Yeoh. I yeah. mean, I, really, I think that's like a two-person race at this point. Yep. Yeah, Michelle Williams got all the nominations she needed, but I think she's running a distant third there. I mean, I'll throw out a, a movie and some actors from that movie that I think got a big bump this week from the Globe nominations and the Critics' Choice nominations. It's a movie that hasn't come out yet. It comes out Christmas Day, Babylon, Damien Chazelle. That movie got the nom, 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 for Best Picture for the uh, Critic Choice Awards. And it got a nom 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 for Best Picture for Best Drama, the Golden Globes. Brad Pitt got a Supporting Actor nomination. And Margot Robbie got Best Actress nominations for both the Globes and the Critic's Choice Award. So I think that movie got a huge bump this week. That's starting to feel like that movie is going to get a Best Picture nomination. 
And now Brad Pitt, I think he's in the running to get a supporting actor nomination. He's not going to win, but I think he got a big, big bump this week. And so I think Babylon is one of our winners of the week from the Globes and from the Critics' Choice Awards. Yeah, because if it would have just been the Globes, I would have said, well, of course the Globes are going to nominate these people in this sort of film. Mm -hmm. But the Critics' Choice, them also mirroring that, makes me think that Bob Babylon is stronger than I initially thought. Yeah. Yeah. And Margot Robbie in best actress is starting to feel like, cause best actress is basically Blanchett's a slam doink and Michelle Yeoh is a slam doink. And I would say Michelle Williams is a slam doink. Viola Davis is close to a doink. And, and then you've got a few people, Daniel uh, Deadweiler from till and I think Margot Robbie now is starting to pull into that fifth slot for Babylon, which would be huge for her because Babylon looked like a disaster, but I guess it might not be. Mm -hmm. um, Nick, do you have anything that jumps out to you from these Globe Nom Nom Noms and the Critics' Choice and the National Board of Review? Do you see any movie or actors that got a huge boost this week? Yeah, I think that we're we're looking for a front runner in the best actor category mm -hmm. um, because there is one, but we don't believe it's going to be him. So no. if it's not going to be Brendan Fraser, then who's it going to be? And I think that Colin Farrell has mm -hmm. been racking it up mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I would consider him at the moment, the front runner for best actor. And he's uh, generally trending or he's like, he's a, he's at like uh plus 300. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're going to go bet and for a front runner to have those kind of odds, I think it's very good right now. Um, he, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, what did he just win? Oh, he won the same award that, uh, Mav that Top Gun Maverick won best movie yep. at, uh, the national board of review. Yep. Um, which Top Gun Maverick is a movie I thought was a joke. Um, I think because Wakanda Forever didn't uh, reach the, the peaks that we thought it would, this is this is that slot. It's the popcorn slot. We got to have one each year. Yep, yep. And this and is what it is. But it's not just a slot. I think uh, it's a whole bucket of I popcorn mean, right now. This could win the Golden Globe. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is a movie that very few people, other than it feels like yourself, Nick, hate. This is a movie that is not going to get a lot of hatred mm -hmm. where there are movies. That's that's one of the things about the you know, the Globes are different. But when we're talking Oscars, there's a preferential ballot. We'll get into that when we get deeper into the mm -hmm. season. But you have to basically rank your movies from one to ten or whatnot. There's going to be uh, a lot one, of people yeah. that are that uh, there's not going to be a lot of people that are going to put Maverick down at the bottom. Sure. I can't see that being sorry, the, Woman King. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, Woman King would probably be somewhere in the middle. What I'm saying is like something like when you look at the whale, there's going to be if that even gets a nom nom nom, there's going to be a Once lot of people tens. putting that down at the bottom. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it literally has no um, chance. Even if yeah. It gets a although uh, one one negative for Top Gun is that I watched it on a plane. OK. And while I was distracted, my son fast forwarded the movie one hour. Okay. Um, I was about an hour in at the time. So then I'm an hour past where I was, never knew it until the movie was over. And I thought, that's too short. I watched the entire last battle scene. And then I thought, I, I missed something. Yeah. <laughs> and then I discovered I had missed an hour. But I didn't notice. Right, 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 right. That's not a great, that's not a great thing for a movie. It's not, it's not, but to be fair, it's a movie that's meant to be watched in theaters, not on planes. And therefore, no, it's about planes, Pat. Well, it's about planes, but ideally you're watching in a theater. And when you're watching a theater, it's very hard for a small child to accidentally fast forward an hour. Well, also, you Nick, had the to Chilean... watch the movie in the setting the of the, the movie. The Chilean no. miners movie doesn't mean you have to watch it in a Chilean mine. You know, I watched Taken in a room that I honestly can't tell you about how I got it in there. Yeah. And right, uh, right. I did some things I regret, but I just heard such good things. 
Right. Yeah. It's nice that they showed a movie in there, though, to the captives. It That's didn't nice feel though. good. <laughs> right. Well, listen, it's always nice to see a movie. Um, here's a movie that I'll throw out. And, and I agree. I think that Colin Farrell, I think you totally nailed it, got a big boost this week because he's probably going to win a Golden Globe. You know, the Golden Globe for Best Actor and Actress, they split it into comedy and drama. Mm -hmm. So Colin Farrell is going to win the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Comedy. That just mm -hmm. is what it is. Well, yeah. well, well, yes, he is. He's he's well, going to I win say that. Also, we'll talk about it later, but uh, Banshees of Inisherin comes out on HBO Max yes. uh, yesterday as we record yes. this. So it's already out. And that's going to help because I think that's been a big boost to everything everywhere at once because yeah. there's just, there's not enough good things that we've seen. Yeah, And so this is coming out. Uh, Brendan Gleeson's been winning some awards. I think he's some competition for Kiwi Kwan, mm -hmm. which is baffling, but it's possible that he could be baffled. It could be. I mean, I think the the thing that holds Brendan Gleeson back is he's got another person in the same movie who also might get a supporting actor nom 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 so they could split the votes and a more famous son. So that doesn't help. Right. Right. So I, I think that Colin Farrell in that movie is really on the upswing. I would get money on him wherever I can. I think he's a slam doink to win best oh, what actor. About the other guy in that movie who's getting nominated well that's what i say yeah. paul uh barry yeah who, who is this guy so he first of all he's going to be spoiler alert for those of you who haven't seen the credit scene after the batman but barry keoghan is going to be joker in wow your batman movies holy Little... fuck so that's this guy's gotta help his chances it's gotta help his well he hasn't been joker yet he's been sort of joker in a cr extra credit scene in that batman movie from this year well, He's going to be that, the Joker. I saw that. Um, uh, uh, Christ, everything, everywhere, all at once. Actress Michelle Yeoh was yep. uh, cast as like the witch in Wicked. I mean, that always helps. It, Gotta it, help. Hollywood likes to know that you're doing well. They don't like people who are doing poorly. So I think it's going to help this guy Barry Keoghan and Banshees that he's going to be Joker. He's had some good roles in indies before he was in. Um, what was that movie, Clayton? Killing I know of you a sacred deer. Killing of a sacred mm. deer. So he was he's in the guy, Eternals, yeah. though. He was in the Eternals. He's the kid. He's the kid in Killing of a Sacred Deer. He's the kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's the okay, weird okay, kid. Okay, okay, yeah. So he's been it's a weird yeah. fucking kid. He's a weird kid. He's kind of weird in Banshees, but weird funny. He's moving. That from guy makes me want to hang out with Cody Smith McPhee. But you know what? In Banshees, he he lightens it up. He does weird but fun, and I think that's going to help. But I think Colin Farrell is gaining on Brendan Fraser for Best Actor. I'm starting to feel that one. Austin Butler, he's riding along. I mean, I think Austin Butler is pretty even this week. He got I'm the nom nom noms he expect. You're you're feeling Colin Farrell. You really like that National Board of Review win. Yeah. I'll, also, I've um. You know, I, I kind of put a lot of my early money on Bill Nye, which okay. he has been winning awards and he yep. has been nominated for every every award he needs to be nominated for. Yes. Bill yes. Nye is in no way out of the out of this. No, he is no. in the top five hardcore, but he yeah. is still being listed on these sites as as like. Someone who wasn't even in a movie this year. I don't understand these fucking odds. Anyway, I put 30 bucks on Bill Nye, and if he wins, I get back 600. Right, right. I mean, that would be great. But, you know, that's 30. I don't think you should. You should be okay with never seeing that $30 again. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think you just have to no, reckon not. with that. And don't spend that 600 yet. And don't spend that 600 yet. Yeah. But no, it was either. It was it was give food to Otis. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Or bet on this yeah i mean i it think we just have otis to have a serious away. talk with otis about what he needs to expect from life in general because of this oscar gambling so well, i haven't seen him in weeks all right okay that's probably for the better here's someone or here's a movie that i'm going to say is up and in terms of at least i think it's getting it's going to have a good chance of getting a best picture nomination that is knives out to 
Glass Onion, aka Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. That has been getting Best Picture nominations. It got it for the Globes in the comedy or musical, which is to be expected, but it got a uh, the Critics' Choice Association also nominated it for Best Picture. I'm starting to feel like Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery is going to get a Best Picture nom, nom, nom. Wow. And guess who got a comedy nomination there for Best Actor? Danny. Yep. Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig. What do you guys think? Odds are pretty good. There's not, uh, obviously, Colin Farrell is going to win this. But mm -hmm. if you were to throw 10 bucks, let's call them Bill Nye bucks. Yep. On someone, is Daniel Craig a bad idea? No, not at all. No. So I've seen this film. Because live in New York, Coastal Elite, get to see Netflix wow. movies early, not wow. to brag, but also bragging. Um, mm -hmm. The movie's great, and Daniel Craig kills in front of a live audience. So I could only imagine at these four-year consideration screenings, the voters are just loving Daniel Craig. And he's a charming guy. The guy played Bond. Yeah, he played Surly Bond, but people still are char charmed by Bond. So I could see that. If I was not putting money on Colin Farrell... That's where I'd put underdog money for at the Globes, best actor in a comedy. I agree. Daniel Craig has a chance. He's got an outside chance at that fifth slot for the Oscars because best actor is such a shit show this year. Mm -hmm. mm, my God. Imagine. It's not going to happen. So uh, before we get into uh, the big release of the week, The Whale, mm -hmm. I just wanted to tell you guys about a gambling website that I have been really enjoying. Oh, it's tell. called Win Bet. You know, Win Casinos. Okay. What a name, right? Oh, it's Win. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Steve Win actually owns um, a lake house across the lake from my uh, my wife's family lake house compound. Oh, do oh. they hang out? Yes, literally. Okay. He has come and hung out at the place. Wow. Um, so he's just a down to earth so guy. Just he's just earth. one of the, I mean, I don't know if you've heard anything specifically, but to me, he's Uncle Steve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, ready to win some money and boost your odds. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New York, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. We're bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting and casino play. Exclusive rewards are right at your fingertips, dummy. They're right there. Just get it. Pick Just it up with it. your stupid fingers. With win rewards on win bet. Looking to get involved in same game parlay? I know Pat is because he's a freak. Win mm -hmm. bet is your home. You can go live at win bet with their win bet, build your own bet, letting you customize the bet you want to make. Not like these other websites that make you bet the bet they want. They tell Great you who to bet for. Are, yeah, they tell you. And I'm like, yeah. buddy, I don't think University of Richmond is going to win the NCAA tournament, but. They told me to bet there. Yep. Great promos, odds, and payouts are happening right now at WinBet. They got what you need. Ready to play? Sign up today with a special offer. Bet 100, win 100. There's so much to choose from. All you got to do is head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet so they know we sent you. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T to claim your free bet today. Talk about the whale. Wow. Okay. So Thank Clayton. you, Uncle Steve. Thank you, Uncle Steve. See Thanks, you at the Stevie. lake. So uh, speaking of bodies of water, Whoa. we saw the whale this weekend. We saw the whale float across a giant screen in uh, New York City and wow. Clayton. Whale watching. We were doing some whale watching and we saw this whale get harpooned. And I think, I think coming out of seeing it, we feel way more iffy on Brendan Frazier's Oscar chances than ever uh -oh. before. Oh, you're back in. Or no, worse. Iffy worse. is worse. Oh, yeah. iffy's worse. Even more iffy. We were well, iffy before. I thought before. you were all out. So now you were iffy. I thought that might be better. Uh, I mean, listen, we get the fact that people like him. Listen, I'm sure he's a great guy and he's got a, this great story and he used to be Dudley do right. Now he's acting in a real movie and that's a nice story, but we saw this film and we're not critics, huh? Huh? huh. But it was, it was kind of a freak show in our, in our estimation, a freak show in terms of 
of of his uh you know chances and i don't think the audience we saw it with was came out of it on his side in the way they may have went into it rooting for him i mean clayton am i off base do, do we feel like the audience we saw it with came out of that thinking brendan Fraser should win an oscar oh no absolutely not i think there's a lot of goodwill Mm -hmm. online for Brendan Fraser, right? I yeah. mean, every generation has their things George that, of the Jungle. Well, I mean, they have their things that older generations look at as crap and mm -hmm. bad, and it gets reclaimed by a younger generation. And it feels like Brendan Fraser is one of those things. Mm -hmm. And I think people are conflating his good-natured way of being with him actually having any sort of like ability to make this movie good. I enjoyed the experience of this movie, but it is by mm -hmm. not a good movie. And his, mm -hmm. it is such a crazy performance in such a crazy role. And I feel like if this were ever to get to the point where he won a best actor for this, it would be instantly regrettable. Like, mm -hmm. it would be instant regret. And I think the Academy does it occasionally where they, you know, something wins. And I think the consensus with people is something like Green Book, right? I liked Green Book. I didn't think it was as egregious as everybody else thought it was. But that was like an instantly regrettable win. And I think that that's going to be the same thing if you give Brendan Fraser this best actor win and I know that's like really projecting out in the future. I don't think he has a chance to win because I think, again, what I said in the previous episodes is that he gives boring speeches. There's only so much you can do with somebody who goes up there and acts like they don't belong there and they're so appreciative and blah, blah, blah. You got to get up there and say, I deserve this to some capacity. And he's not doing that. And I think that means he's not going to win. Yeah. And also... A major sequence in this film involved him shoving candy in his mouth and then puking into a garbage can. And I feel like that's the type of thing that turns off older Academy voters. Mm -hmm. And I don't think younger voters particularly love that either. So I think it's tough to win the Oscar when you're, you're, uh, you know, your clip is probably going to be you vomiting into a garbage can. Yeah. Do you think they're going to use that as the in memoriam when he dies? Oh, I think it's a great in memoriam clip. I just don't think it's a great best actor, best scene clip. But in memoriam, yeah, to have yeah. puke you, in a you garbage think, can. You think when Jeff Daniels dies, they're going to use the Dumb and Dumber on the toilet clip? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I if they died the same year and you play those back to back, I think you've got a real banger in memoriam. So I uh, listen, I hope that's 50 years into the future. I hope they both live a long time, but okay, guys, we got to move on. Okay. The whale is a hit. The guys love it. Put all your money on it next. Uh, we got to talk about where we're putting our money this week. Okay. Now, what are we going to do? We can't avoid the golden globes. The lines are up. They're very tasty mm -hmm. and mm. we got to take a bite hat. Uh, have you been able to peruse the lines? Um, I am. Us? I am looking at them right now, and the, I I am going to use this site, which we mentioned already. So I'll say it again. Uh, Bet yeah. US. They have the Globes. I already have an account there, so that's all good to go. Um, you know what is sticking out at me is some of the things that that we thought were. Uh, where we'd put our money, they're becoming the favorites. But I think something I might put my money on is I'm looking at this best director category. And Steven Spielberg is the favorite. He's minus 350 for the Fablemans. But a movie that I'm considering is James Cameron Avatar is mm. plus 800. I haven't heard of this one. And this is coming out this Friday. Probably as you're listening to this, it's coming out. And of course, Clayton and I, we host the BO Boys, a show about box office, money, dollars and cents. Avatar Way of Water is about to become the biggest movie of the year. It's going to be gigantic. It's Avatar. Now, Avatar? You think Avatar is going to make a lot of money? I Listen, that that's why you listen to the BO Boys for insight like that, that that's Avatar Way of Water is going to be huge. 
And I think James Cameron for director at my at plus 800, that's something I am strongly considering right now. And, uh, you know, looking at best drama, I think Elvis and Avatar Way of Water both are plus a thousand. I yeah, think and those I can't are real tasty. This. Every category is on here. Yeah. It's crazy. Like best song, score, screenplay, whatever. It's all here. Yeah. Best animated film, foreign language film. Um, it's fun. There's a lot of fun things going on. I, I'm excited to put some money on these. Daniel and I'm Craig think- is plus 375. Yeah, that one is tough. He's definitely, I think, running second there, but I think Colin Farrell's such a strong almost a slam doing to win the the best actor in a comedy. I think the picks yeah. I'm looking at are Cameron for director. And either Elvis or and or Avatar at plus one thousand for best picture drama because I do think the Fablemans is it's the favorite on the line, but I think it is a weak favorite mm, to me. 100%. So that's what I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What What uh, about you, Nick? Any 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 morsels? Seeing yeah, for extra sure. Tasty so Michelle you? Yeoh, um, too much of a favorite. Mm-hmm. She's at minus four hundred. You're not betting on her anymore. No. I mean, especially in this, because they're that's a con- they're you know it's a comedy movie, and so uh, Margot Robbie at plus three fifty. I don't know what's going on with Margot Robbie. That seems like someone people want to vote for. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's any good best actress choices. Um, I do think Daniel Craig is a waste of money. As much as I would like to mm-hmm. be wrong about that, um, Austin Butler isn't even enough to vote or to, to bet on because he's at plus 130 right which right i'm not making it up that's not wetting my beak enough right um bill nye is at plus 850 and this site has a t in his name 19 mm-hmm. they call it so if you put your money on that do you get it back i mean listen not to cast aspersions on any of these sites but i could see bet us possibly using the, that as a way this out. one is the literal worst website gambling website i've ever seen in my entire life yeah yeah so bill nighty that might be enough for them to not send you your winnings that happens all the time yeah on this website um but uh, best drama picture top gun plus 250 i mean it's just dumb enough to work yeah, I mean Clayton, you're the one who brought up that Tom Cruise and his uh, his Golden Globes back last year. Do you think that the Globes would be petty and not consider Top Gun? I mean, they nominated it, but do you think there's no chance it'll win because they don't want Cruise to shit on them on their own show? I mean, a hundred percent they're petty, mm-hmm. but I yeah, I don't think I'd be really shocked if it won. Mm-hmm. I, I'm mm-hmm. not saying there's a zero percent chance, but I mean, I think I just I feel like Maverick is going to be the popcorn choice and not a serious contender, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, because if you're going to go for a popcorn one, I think Avatar has a way better chance, and Elvis, mm-hmm. and even yeah, the fable, and it, people even haven't the, seen Avatar yet, and that's the that's the only reason it's not getting as much love. But when uh when do you have to vote for the Globes? I mean, Avatar will be out by then, and people have already uh, will already have seen it. I'm sure. It's I have. To, it's a technical marvel. I have a a a a, a good bet. Okay. okay. I have a good bet. All right. Okay. So we're talking. This has uh, best original song. Okay. Is available. Now it's got some Rihanna song. It doesn't have the movies, and there's not a single movie, uh, uh, a single song that I know which movie it came from. Mm-hmm. But uh, the favorite is Lift Me Up by Rihanna and a team of, I assume, men. Mm-hmm. Um, it's from Wakanda then, Forever, Nick. Okay, Wakanda Forever. All right. A, a, a movie that has disappointed the B.O. boys. Not really, no. Okay. Um, it's disappointed some of the people who have written into your show. Yes. Okay. Hold My Hand, Lady Gaga. And a bunch of other people who I assume are women. Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. Okay, that's even. Those are the two front runners. Those they're they're basically even. 
And then number three, mm. Taylor Swift, Carolina. Do we know what movie that's from? Where the Crawdads Sing. Where the Crawdads Sing. Okay. Sleeper Summer Hit. This is the kind of category where mm-hmm. you don't need to watch the fucking movie. Mm-hmm. This is the kind of category where a Crawdad Sleeper wins. Mm-hmm. And people look at this list. They think, who's my favorite artist? Oh, it's Taylor Swift. Yeah. So Taylor Swift, how incredible would that be to see Taylor Swift give a a speech at the Academy Awards? I think she I mean, no one's no one's better at making the news than this lady. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Plus 800 is the line. That's for the Golden Globes. Mm hmm. Taylor well, Swift winning a Golden Globe is the most normal thing I've ever heard of. What would you put on that? Oh, I'd how, max how it much? out. I mean, I'm sure the max is like fifteen dollars. That's what we're okay. working with here. So mm-hmm. max it out, baby. Get the mm-hmm. hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. I kind of uh, feel like hold my hand is is almost a slam dunk here. Hold my hand. Different. You got to hold my hand. I'm all so it's love you, Pat. Best. I mean, that. the best that I best can. That. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Of Do you course. know where they're from? Of course, Carolina. Duff. The the name of Taylor Swift song Whoa. that Nick is saying to put your money on. I mean, it's not a coincidence. Listen, and where the crawdads sing, I think, is the type of movie that the Golden Globes would get behind. You know, it's about a lady who, in real life, did a murder and got away with it. So I think that the Globes could be kind of into that. And I think, yeah, Taylor Swift winning there makes a lot of sense. Can I throw out? Something that I could see as a possible underdog uh, to put some money on. Best animated film. Your nominees are Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. It's a Netflix movie. It's minus 400. Turning Red is plus 350. And that is a Disney cartoon version of Teen Wolf. Yes. Yes. And it never went to theaters, Disney Plus. It was a whole controversial thing, you know. As Disney the Bo Boys it. covered extensively, it was Disney's part. Uh, it was a, a part of Disney's hiding uh, movies made by uh, minority creators. Yes, they it's wouldn't a, put them in the theaters and, until a white guy made a movie that bombed. Yeah, until until of course uh, of course uh, what's the what's the Toy Story movie's name? I can't even remember. It was so Lightyear. slight. Buzz Lightyear. Lightyear. Until Lightyear. So turning red, but I think running third at plus one thousand, something that I'm starting to feel is an has an outside shot to win the mm-hmm. Oscar for best animated film. Mm-hmm. Marcel the Shell with shoes on, based on a viral Vimeo video from a decade ago made by uh, a comedian actress, Jenny Slate. She's someone who I think is probably doing really well going out to these screenings, charming voters. She's a performer, likable person. And I think that movie is starting to catch on. And I know Guillermo del Toro is a giant and he's, you know, he's won an Oscar for best director but I think Marcel could win here and at the Oscars and at plus 1,000, mm-hmm. I think that's worth a $10 bet because I mm-hmm. I think that's going to win. Right uh, now, as I sit here today, I think Marcel, the shell with shoes on, will win the globe. I think there's just so many Pinocchios. Uh, there's yep. just been so many Pinocchios. There's already a Pinocchio, what, earlier this year or late last year? Or, this or, this year, the Zemeckis one Zemeckis where Pinocchio looks at a pile of shit is, is, is a scene in that Pinocchio movie. That's right. That was this year. I think I agree. I mean, who would you rather hobnob with? Mm-hmm. A Pixar spaz or Jenny Slate, somebody mm-hmm. who's – stood on stage took the slings and arrows of of i mean nick you know about this being on stage you know uh taking uh, all of the guff that people have throwing it back at them being confident being charming these are all things that stand-up com- comedians need to do comedians need to be and jenny slate is all of those things so i think that she could charm some people plus it's a charming movie people like this movie yeah none of the other movies are 
universally beloved. Right. I know Turning this- Red, people like that movie, but again, it's it's a movie that was only on Disney Plus. It's a it's slight Pixar at this point because it didn't get a theatrical release. So I think this has a good chance. Absolutely. Um, I uh, we all have our little systems. Mm-hmm. And one of my systems is that I do not bet for people that I know. OK. And I I, I know Jenny Slate. Um, mm-hmm. I did her show Big, Big Terrific um, out there in Brooklyn uh, many times. Maybe the show I did more than any other show that I did. Mm-hmm. Um, love Jenny Slate. She's incredible. She can't win because I know her. That uh, same thing goes for uh, best supporting actress in a comedy TV comedy uh, for the Golden Globes. Janelle James. I was uh, her landlord at one point. Wow. Uh, well, but I bad I, I, look, she Nick. Took, bad she look, took, Nick. She took over my apartment, and uh, she kept calling me every time something went wrong. And okay, okay. I don't. I don't actually work there. But that's also why you're not going to vote for Bill Knight. Um, you were his landlord. Because, I was, well, it is in the in his early career, but yeah. uh, I'm sorry, uh, Janelle can't win. Um, much like the Lucases last year, um, Trayvon, it's not going to happen. But All you right. Know what's funny is Hannibal Burris is Nick's landlord right now, for sure. Yeah. Um. So, all right, if you want it, but listen, I don't know her from a hole in the wall, so I'm going to put some money on her movie. So th- okay. that's where I'm at. I think I think those are my my first thoughts are James Cameron, best director, Marcel. I think those are some of the ones I'm going to consider putting my money on right now. But we'll definitely delve into the Globes more and more as we get closer. Because yeah. I think the ceremony is January 10th. Quick. Yeah. Uh, January 10th. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, just before we we move off it, um, I do know that it was only recently classified as an animated movie. Marcel, the show was shoes on mm-hmm. um, like in the past couple of weeks. And so I don't think it was eligible for a lot of the things. And so I think it has less buzz coming into the Globes than it would have had it been eligible for all of these things earlier. Okay. So but when it, are the Annie's, the the animated awards? Um, that's a good question. Up and see they are it's... on the um, the spreadsheet, which we still have not made public, but the show isn't public, so what's the fucking difference? Um, but yeah, people are getting 10 episodes at once right now, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you will get three episodes this week. Congratulations. So the Annie's are on Saturday, February 25th. Okay. Um, which is the same day as the Producers Guild Awards, the day before the Screen Actors Guild Awards. Wow, that's gonna be a huge weekend. Do not make plans, Clayton and Nick, because I think we're just we're bunkering down that whole weekend. Yeah, we gotta start doing some uh some live uh streams for some of these bigger awards will definitely we got to do a live stream for the Golden Globes. That's yes. At, at the very least. I think our episode that week is the live stream. hundred percent. Oh, so, I don't know. I think we have six episodes that week. Because wow. It's a big week. Just and then they'll all in. come out the week after that. Yeah. They'll, 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 they'll all come out in April. They'll be yeah. out by the Oscars. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So um, deadline for Annie award submissions was this past Tuesday. So therefore, their nominations haven't come out yet. So we will see how mm. Marcel the shell with shoes on does. OK, well, guys, let's move in to our big deep dive of the week, which is uh, the streaming movie on streaming on Showtime. Everything everywhere all at once. It's a big early favorite of all of ours. Clayton famously uh, took out a second mortgage on his house to put all of his money on it, winning Best Picture. Uh, Clayton, do you want to lead us off? Well, I mean, I'm no big fan of this movie. Oh, um, I it's not my sort of thing. Oh, <gasps> but as we say at the B.O. Boys, uh, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how I feel about this movie. It doesn't matter if I think this movie is good or bad. It, what it means, like what's going on right now is it's a strong favorite. And I think a lot of people like this movie. It's hard to find people that genuinely dislike this movie. And so I think it has a lot of strength here. Plus, 
you've got a directing duo one of them is a person of color it's a it's mm. a cast that's full of people of color mm. it's one of those things that's a good sort of movie mm. that the academy can be happy to nominate and to award well mm -hmm. and it was a hit a genuine surprise across the board box office hit you know everything everywhere came out march 25th uh 2022 this past spring and it just stayed steady in the box office from march all the way until it basically played into september and you look at this box office run it got to 70 million domestic and over 100 million worldwide and it's just every weekend racking it up Look at these weekends, 6 million, 6 million, 5 million, 5.5 million, 3.5 million, 3.5 million, 3.1, 2. That's like some Titanic level sustainability. Yes, yes. On that level, that's exactly what it did. It it had great word of mouth. It played all across the country. It wasn't just an indie coastal lease movie. It played in the stacks. It played for the Earth Dogs and the Plain Billies. Everyone liked this movie. And, you know, it's a multiverse movie you know it's not a superhero movie but it took a lot of those superhero elements it had people traveling across different universes and you had ninja fighting and you had all these things that people love in superhero movies mm -hmm. but it was in this weird comedy drama so i think it's the type of thing that plays really well because it takes a lot of elements of just the big popcorn giant superhero movies that everyone goes to see, but it was really yeah. weird. Yeah, it gets, an, yeah, yeah. Can I add an element here real quick? A24. Mm. So this is an Time. A24 movie. Exactly. Thank you very much, Nick. That's what I was going to say. This is a studio that has been emerging. It's kind of a hip studio. People love the merch. People love talking about A24. A24 is a brand. Mm -hmm. And they there's been questions can a24 ever get over that hump to win a best picture to start winning a lot of awards and it feels like there's goodwill towards a24 in a way there's not goodwill towards say netflix right mm -hmm. and i feel like this is the sort of movie that everybody can get on board for because a24 puts out some challenging stuff some stuff that's hit or miss i mean the whale is also an a24 movie and so I do think that it might be, you know, as those billboards said for 12 Years a Slave, it's time. It's well, time. A24 does have a best picture win. It's the Moonlight Studio. Oh, that's so, true. Okay. So they, they, their time has come, but their time could come again yeah, with yeah. this movie. And yeah. this movie is just cool all the way around. And, you know, I know uh, me as a 41-year-old saying something's cool holds extra weight. And this is cool. It's A24 is cool. These filmmakers are cool. Jamie Lee Curtis and Michelle Yeoh making their sort of like comeback stories are cool. Uh, uh, the the actor who played Data and Short Round, who hasn't acted in 20 years, him coming back to possibly win supporting actor. Kiwi Kwan. Kiwi Kwan. That's cool. The whole vibe of this movie is cool. And I think that's only going to help this movie. It's just a cool fun movie well because back in our day they people used to ask you do you like indie movies do you mm -hmm. watch indie movies now right. the question is do you like a24 movies mm -hmm. that's how big of a mm -hmm. studio this has become when it comes to those sort of movies yeah nick did you yeah. see this movie in a movie theater at home i what, saw what this is... at home with okay. my lovely wife okay and we loved it great uh, we had a great time, great movie. One of those movies where you think, wow, they did so much. And I think mm -hmm. it's a great movie to have in a year after Nomadland. Yes. A movie that was nothing. Mm -hmm. One and all. Yeah. And this time it's a movie that is everything. I mean, God, just the costume changes alone. I hope they made a lot of money. It's it's yeah. amazing that they made this movie for as little money as they did, because yeah. there are you get so it. many Kwan. sets. Here we go. I mean, he he he. He'll do it. He scale. Yeah, not any, not after this. No he's way. a name, but you know, as a that you don't know yet. Um, but I will say it's another one of my on the scale of um, 
I don't, I don't put money on people I know. Mm -hmm. I actually, I pitched a show at A24 once. Okay. Or early. This was uh, right after Swiss Army Man. Okay. And in fact, a de- a corpse of Daniel Radcliffe adorned their lobby. It should. It just sits there. Yeah. And uh, they did not like me or, or my pitch. Okay. They said, no, we do Oscar winning things here, like Moonlight and another one. I didn't know what that meant. Right, right. But I think they meant everything everywhere all at once and also it's the only meeting i've ever been to where the person that i was meeting with refused to shake my hand wow this guy saw me coming from so far right i have nothing but respect for him and his company a24 is going to get its second oscar win wow because they were smart enough to see your yep your Bullshit pitch coming from a mile away. How did oh, you yeah. even get that meeting if they were so anti you so immediately? Well, you know, it's uh, Hollywood. So uh, my manager also managed Gerard Carmichael, who they were making his show for NBC. Oh, got it. So it was a it was a make good or, you know. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? Good on them for giving you the meeting, but then good on them for also, I guess, not shaking your head, even though listen, well, you want to, you want to stay in the Gerard business. If it's right. meeting me keeps you there, it's it's 20 minutes well spent. Right. They know what they're doing, but yeah. listen, if you see Nick in the street, shake his hand. Cause he's a good guy. I don't get a lot of people who like me. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't don't like me. You really don't like me. See, that is a great sequel right there. (laughs) Um, yeah, I I really like this movie. I saw it in a movie theater. I saw it with my wife, and we both loved it. The theater was it was such a great theatrical experience because you don't get a lot of comedies these days in the uh, in the movie theaters, and this was an actual comedy that people were laughing at the whole way through. And I think that's something we're kind of sleeping on. This is a comedy that could win best picture. And that is pretty yeah. rare. And uh, I think it's a rootable thing. And I think the voters could get caught up in that and caught up in remembering how much they laughed when they Buddy, saw this movie. Best picture of last year, just in terms of enjoyment in the theater, I think we can all agree, jackass. Of course. Yes. It's that's the one that right now is not getting its due at these awards. Yeah. Well, that was this year. Well, you mean no, 2022? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Jackass was last year. Oh, because these episodes are going to come out in 2023. <laughs> no, I'm just yeah, saying yeah. it was my favorite of last year. I yes. did not get nominated. Yeah. Uh, um, I I love this movie. Um, I had some I, I would say it's it's one of those movies that went a little too long. It probably had too many false endings. But it's I enjoyed it so much that I can't critique that, you know, maybe one to 45 too many uh, weird things people had to do. Yeah, get their things. But it's clearly a movie where they just had a billion ideas and they put all of them into it. That's what happens when you pay for both Daniels. Right, right. If you hired one Daniel, then you would have got half as many ideas. Nomadland. Then you get Nomadland. No. Now, Pat, I would maybe you mentioned it as a comedy, and that is true. I would hide that. I think if I was going to go for best picture and I would really try to hide that, I feel like I would I would say it's action. It's multiverse. It's about the connection that we all have. I would I would I would kind of not try to couch it as a comedy, even though it is. Yeah, the awards people are very much against comedy I mean, they'll they'll give a horror movie a nomination over a comedy. You know, I, I feel like that's maybe something to hide. So I, in clip showing, I would show the most poignant clips here, not the most like comedic. I wouldn't show like hot dog fingers. I think you got to lean into it. And you got to I yeah, think you got to show the hot dog fingers. Too good. Do you guys um, do you guys know any like really good editors? I mean, I am an editor for a living, no, no, no. but no, but like really good. No, editor. not. Yeah, I not really would. I would think it's great. You, you if uh, someone made like trailers for different genres for this movie, mm-hmm. see how many you could make. 
like a superhero movie right comedy a drama whatever a war movie yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah if 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 any of you listening to this in the year 2025 are a good editor <laughs> you should definitely still, do that this would still hit still gonna go viral yeah you should it else people remember this it's on showtime so it's gonna live forever um, um okay so is there any other uh category besides uh um besides actress best supporting actor well director. jamie lee curtis got a golden globe jamie nomination don't sleep on jamie lee curtis i mean yeah. here's here's the big question for this movie as far as the nominations it's looking like jamie lee curtis is a slam doink to get the nomination and she's a strong candidate to win supporting actress especially this, if she keeps showing up in these kiwi kwan speeches exactly i mean that's the thing is it always, it helps to know that guy because he's all over the place and the thing is is this a movie that's going to get two supporting actress nominations mm. because the actress the uh stephanie hugh i think is her name mm -hmm. is plays the daughter and she's got a huge part in this movie she's got a much bigger she's really part than great. jamie lee's she's really great but uh, she's not famous as, yeah. ja as jamie lee curtis is but I think this movie, if this is one of those movies that's going to get like 12 nominations on Oscar Day, it could end up with two supporting actress nominees. Uh, oh, I, I, feel like, could. I feel like Women Talking, which is a movie we didn't talk about for the Globes because they barely nominated it. That may do a lot. If that has any strength the Oscar nominations could have a lot of women there mm. in supporting for that movie, pushing out to everything everywhere all at once nominated guys she's I, not gonna get nominated and jamie i know lee why curtis? no oh the other girl stephanie oh. i think jamie lee curtis will mm -hmm. um because she went ugly and it happened to be in the best movie of the year uh and that's gonna help but um i know the girl who plays her girlfriend tally okay uh, the movie and so she she spends too much time in the movie talking to someone i know Wow, so that's how far this goes. Whoa. If someone you know is talking to someone else in a movie, yeah, the person they're talking to can't get a nomination. Yeah, Tally and Sunita, um, uh, were both in a, a group called Cocoon Central Dance Team that I did a, a million shows with back in the day in Brooklyn. Wow. So, do you think this has anything to do why the twenty four guy wouldn't shake your hand because anybody oh. you're associated with doesn't get? nominations or well win? yeah i'm saying like uh, no one knew then except for geniuses like that guy yeah right uh it. tally didn't know you know sunita didn't know she sunita's gonna have the greatest career but never get nominated for it jeez well i mean this is not looking good for us clayton for us getting an oscar nomination for best podcast for the bo boys so all right well we'll just have to live with that because you know what nick we still like knowing you and is there anything else we want to say about everything everywhere all at once? No. We'll be talking about that movie a lot as the So Nick, what movie are we going to deep dive into yeah. next week? Okay, so <clears throat> let me tell you now that the Sorry. Now that the uh Golden Globe nominations are out, uh I just wanted to direct you to some places on streamers where you can see Golden Globe nominated movies. Great. Um, White Noise will be on Netflix on December 30th. That's Adam Driver nominated for Best Actor. Um, I we've never talked about this. I have not read about this in any article. I can't imagine I, he's a contender. I saw that in a movie theater already, and I uh wanted it to be my favorite movie of all time, and I liked it a lot, but it is not my favorite movie of all time. Glass Onion will be on Netflix December 23rd. Mm -hmm. Blonde. The Good Nurse, Blonde uh, Anna Armas is uh, nominated for uh, as Marilyn. Yep. And The Good Nurse uh, sees our boy Eddie Redmayne nominated for Best Supporting Actor. And uh, again, uh, opposite last year's Best Actress winner, Jessica Chastain. And RRR, uh, a movie that was confoundingly left out by the uh, India Movie Board for inclusion uh, for Best Foreign Film in the Golden Globe nominating process. Was not even huh. up for it. Huh. Wow. Um, but uh, it's still one of the movies in there, so I'm I'm leaving it in. Uh, also, good luck to you, Leo Grand. 
um, right. starring Helen Mirren, nominated. Emma Thompson. On Hulu. Or Emma Thompson, sorry. Uh, Hulu. And Banshees of Sharon, HBO Max, right now, which will be our movie of the week next week. Banshees, go see it on HBO before our show next week. Very exciting. And it's a fun movie, so you're going to have a good time. And everyone has HBO at this point. It's like... You know. I mean, you don't know someone who has HBO. Exactly. End it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Guys, that's our show today. Uh, check out the Patreon. Um, I think it's patreon.com slash get rich Nick because I haven't changed that yet. Uh, we get uh, early episodes of this uh, video of these, and uh, it's where we're going to have all of our late breaking information, which this betting process requires. Uh, check out the Discord the SGP and Discord, I, I don't know yet. I mean, these are call to actions that will make sense to us eventually. Yes. And uh, check out the spreadsheet. It's available maybe on the Discord, maybe on the Patreon, maybe somewhere else. Maybe on the website. Who the fuck knows? This show's just getting started. Thanks for joining us. I'm Nick the Father Turner. I'm Pat the Hat Stango. I'm Clayton Speeches King Gumbert. And that is the show, Me the Money, for this week. Join us next week and every week after until we stop doing it, which is like three months from now. Bye.